We have Bitcoin here currently trading unchanged on the day. All eyes right now are on Ethereum. Ethereum versus the US dollar is up 11.5% today. Ethereum versus Bitcoin, we've been tracking this one just yesterday, up 11.5% today. That's what everyone's focused on today. We'll talk about that in one second. First, let's talk about what's going on with Bitcoin. Currently trading unchanged on the day. This candle, this is a bit of a doji candle right now. Still got some time yet before it closes. What does that mean? What is happening? The bears and the bulls are battling out over here on Bitcoin. We want to know what is next. A lot of people are worried about a lot of things. When I say that, what do I mean? We have a lot of people, we have a lot of people worried about FUD. You know, very, very normal for bull market cycles to see coordinated FUD attacks over and over again. Getting in the minds of a lot of people. Getting it. Should you always be aware of all the, the risks around you in the trade investment that you're in? Of course. Should you be risk adverse? Of course. When you have an idea that's coming together and you really feel strongly about it, should you be highly concentrated or diverse? I myself am very, 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 very concentrated. The more I understand something, the more of a concentrated bet I can make. Now, when it comes to Bitcoin over here, a lot of people right now are thinking about Tether, the FUD, uh, I say FUD, maybe it's real. Maybe they have genuine concerns that are being picked up about Tether. I don't know. I tend to uh, I tend to refer to people who have been right and have a history of being right for many, many years. And that's where people really gain and earn my trust or where I'll consider their opinion and making up my own mind. I am under the, the, the mindset that Anything that doesn't kill Bitcoin makes it stronger. And Tether, if Tether tomorrow, if the SEC were to open up some type of criminal case versus Tether, what would happen? What happened when they opened up the the, the lawsuit with Ripple, the SEC? Uh, Ripple traded off, and what did Bitcoin do? Oh, Bitcoin traded up. The rest of the crypto market traded up. We're getting rid of the bad wood, so to speak, over here. And that includes, if that does include Tether or not, if it does, it, Bitcoin's not going to blink. It's only going to actually firm up the case for Bitcoin because then people can't point to Tether. By the way, Tether is printed as 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 funds are added to Tether to keep it pegged to, to as close as they can to the dollar using whatever mythology they're using. You could check out the website if you're interested in those details. And then, you know, anytime that that funds are pulled, they're actually also burnt. Tether fluctuates both ways needed to keep it to be pegged. You hear often about the Tether being created. When was the last time you were informed when Tether was burnt? Think about that. All right, I'm not worried about it. You could continue worrying about it. Every day I see more and more stuff or people talking about how they're worried about Tether. That's fine, but it, but it's not like contagious. Just because you're worried about it, I'm not going to worry about it. Or for whatever reason that you're worried about it, it's not good enough for me. I'm not worried about it. All right. What is going on and what I am what am I thinking on Bitcoin over here? We looked at it this morning on that live stream was a beautiful, beautiful fire session. If you were there this morning, go ahead and smash the like button now as we get started here for our afternoon update. Bitcoin continues to consolidate over here. Some people following Bitcoin on the one hour, on the one hour time frame, looking for patterns on the one hour time frame, such as perhaps this over here. You could see that rising wedge. It came down, price so far just confirming that resistance. Is it possible that from here we trade down? Well, that could be, but I'm not I'm not focused on the one hour time frame. You're gonna get whipsawed around or in these normal market fluctuations following the one hour time frame. Over here on the eight hour time frame, a little bit clearer, right? What do, when I say clearer, why? Why do I say that? Well, we're right now watching Bitcoin consolidate in this wedge pattern over here. We're very focused and waiting for that trend line break to the upside or or a chance to perhaps buy some cheaper Bitcoin down over here. So whether or not this opportunity comes where, where you're able to pick up more Bitcoin down towards the end of this channel over here, if this is a downward sloping channel, if we come down into this area somewhere, somewhere between let's call it 32,400 Bitcoin and anything into 3,000, that's going to be a very nice place to, to pick up some cheap Bitcoin, in my opinion, very cheap Bitcoin, still waiting for that trend line to break above, even if we come down over here. Getting caught up on the one hour over here into resistance. Well, we looked at that this morning and we said, you know what? Right now, where we're waiting to break outside this wedge pattern, we're into some resistance. We wouldn't buy over here, right? That's what we said. We wouldn't buy over here. We'd wait to see if you had the opportunity to buy down further down here or 
if we break outside this wedge pattern over here, if we break outside that trend line over here, that opens up a much better buy entry, a much higher probability trade, uh, at least in my opinion over here to the upside. Otherwise it's waiting and being patient. You're not looking to buy up here, but you wouldn't be, you, this is, is this something you wanna sell? Like Bitcoin is in a massive bull market and it's just into some light resistance, doing what it does, consolidating before its next leg up. Do you wanna, do you wanna sell here? And for what reason, if you do, is it because you're worried about Tether? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm holding my Bitcoin, right? So let's keep that going over here. Let's look at Ethereum over here. Ethereum, we said, okay, we could see some profit taking now this morning. Prices recovered already. If if that profit taking already took place and we found a bid in Ethereum, it, it looked like that could possibly happen. As we get here to the all-time high, right, the worry was for price to come off a little bit to watch out over here. Price came off 7.5%. I would say that's a that's a you know, little bit of fluctuation up here at the all time high. Looks like Ethereum is actually getting its bearings and price discovery could begin to the upside and continue from here. Are you trying to sell the top on Ethereum? And if so, why? Right. Uh, if you're waiting to get into Ethereum, buying right here is probably not the best risk to reward opportunity, uh, at least in the near term. It, you know, at least in the near term, you probably want to wait until you get a clearer consolidation and before getting back into Ethereum, waiting for a clearer signal. Those have developed. Remember, everyone was watching over here on uh, Dot Bitcoin over the weekend as it was making massive moves to the upside. It has since consolidated. That's what we were looking for over the weekend on Saturday's video. And it has since consolidated over here. It does it appears now into that buy zone. Is it making now? or getting ready to make that next leg up, it appears that it might be. Cardano, much of the same over here. Again, you could see over here was when, I said, okay, watch out, let it consolidate, it's consolidated, and now we're seeing Ethereum, which has made the move, or we're gonna see some funds flow out of Ethereum, perhaps into some make something like DOT or, or Cardano. It could be, or it could be into Bitcoin, right? It could be into Bitcoin. I know a lot of people are worried right here, but that's what bear markets do. They climb a wall of worry, they climb a wall of FUD, you know? There's always a, there's always a pretty, not, pretty nice narrative out there which one are you believing? If you there's so many resources today to understand Bitcoin, these guys, these pioneers, these intellectual giants who a decade ago had already gone through and game played this all out. They are the voices that you want to learn from. They are the voices you want to listen to. I think that the education that you could get in Bitcoin, which probably took I would say it took me two years of really you know really uh, paying attention and studying Bitcoin. To kind of understand it or to understand it enough that I, I could really, really solidly get behind it with confidence. Right. So I think that could be done now in probably just a few months because of the amount of information today in 2021 that's readily, readily available to everyone. I just saw VJ on uh, what, what, what Bitcoin did podcast. If you haven't checked that out, that's like some real straight beginner stuff. That's something you, you know, that's, that's Bitcoin 101 beginner stuff that was just published this week on there. There's a ton of information out there, but you got to start doing the work. Even if Ethereum, if you are interested in Ethereum and a long-term investment in Ethereum, right? Riding over here, Bitcoin's bull market waves over here, then understand, spend your time understanding Ethereum, the risks. Do understand that this is highly speculative technology that they're just trying to figure it out as they go and they might do that and if they succeed the potential upside overall for, for ethereum enormous enormous but bitcoin's the one competing versus money bitcoin's the one that i am focused in on we've looked over here at ethereum bitcoin we were watching that last week right we were watching that saturday morning as we came into here and that's what we looked at since then we've come over there and resumed off that support conquering the markets all day long this is textbook ctm at its finest I hope that you all or anyone interested that was able to, to to take that was able to get involved in that trade and I or you know if that's what they saw there or or anyone who just learned from it. You don't even have to take the trade to be learning. You don't have to trade Ethereum Bitcoin. You don't have to trade the Australian dollar Japanese yen. It doesn't matter. 
the thing is what you can learn from doing TA across the board on all these instruments that all adds up and all of a sudden makes you be able to see the market and navigate them with strong clarity. Let's take a look here at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, NASDAQ up 1.6% today. There was uh, an interview that someone uh, sent my way over here. This is on Real Vision talking about, you know, Jeff Booth. You know, Jeff Booth is very, very, uh, you know, uh, he likes to articulate how techno technology is deflationary, right? We know that Raul Paul thinks that everything is deflationary for different reasons, right? Secular de uh, deflationary trends, he calls it, whether it's demographics or uh, however he explains it. And they're really sold that, that that's the environment we're in. I see inflation all around me, right? I see inflation all around me. It seems like these two guys over here are struggling to understand because they have this strong deflationary thesis, how they could also be seeing inflation all around them. If you look at their faces, if you read their body languages, they're struggling to make sense of it. I'm not, I'm not struggling to make sense of it. It was pretty clear to me early on, very early on, all the way down over here when the Fed act, act, acted, I had this discussion basically with all of you. You could go back to the videos into March and into the beginning of April when you know everyone's talking about how QE is deflationary. I was like, oh yeah, QE, hyper, Uber, Uber asset inflationary, stocks go up, buy stocks, you know? Uh, so I don't know, you know, I do know. And then we've also looked at Bitcoin's four year cycle over here. And this helps us to see this purple one, the first cycle, which was in a very easy federal, uh, a very easy environment coming down from the Federal Reserve where they were actually started QE. And this is just like fuel to Bitcoin's fire. Over here, there was no QE. In the second cycle over here, there was no QE. It was not as easy of a monetary policy. And they started actually raising rates into the end of this cycle. Did that keep this cycle more muted than this one? In the current cycle we're in, we have QE, right? We have we have QE ever since the halving. Uh, we have massive amounts of QE, 350 billion monthly in 2021 from the G10 alone. And you can see Bitcoin is mirroring more the first cycle over here. People are wondering, well, there was new money coming into this cycle. Well, there's a lot of new money coming into the cycle as well. A lot of new money and big money coming into the cycle right now as well. Stocks go up, stocks are going up in my opinion. You know, at this point, I'm going to let them go up. If there's any type of meaningful, meaningful correction, maybe they'll be interesting. It depends when it is. I expect as the dollar continue to, to, to be devalued in purchasing power, that stocks will continue to go up, probably led by the tech stocks. Uh, I don't think that we're returning to any type of growth anytime soon. That also helps me make the case over here for the precious metals. Both those reasons that I just spoke of, the continued devaluation of the dollar is purchasing power. And then also you're looking at over here, uh, we're, we're not gonna be returning to growth anytime soon, in my opinion. Uh, I know a lot of people think that the vaccines are gonna lead to growth. We'll see how that works out. I don't think that's really the the plan here. Uh, what What is the plan? I don't know, let's take a look at the dollar over here. Let's, Brad sent did this updated chart. We've been watching this chart with Brad here for, for months now. And you could see that when we, when we only had one touch into this trend line, this clone outer trend line was placed here by Brad. Right now, a lot of people, a lot of like uh, analysts will tell you, well, you need three touches before you could add a trend line. And I've always said that's absolutely wrong. I, for in my, I, I always add them when I have two touches and even one touch. You can't tell me it's wrong. It's how I do my TA. My TA is good. Right. And over here, Brad did the same thing. He went and closed this line, had the one touch over here. You could see that's where we just came into resistance right now, holding that line of resistance in this big downward sloping channel. Where does that relate to what I have going on over here, right over here on the eight hour? Everyone, because I uploaded a video yesterday on the DXY. Notice how I'm focusing in what's important today, what was important yesterday. Right. Notice how instead of me imposing my will on the market, I'm just kind of very open to what the market is showing me. And that's where I am focused. All right. Very, very, very important. You got to be fluid. So here the DXY, right? I have this outer trend line over here. That's the big resistance of the channel. I've showed you what that looks like in the recent videos over here. All right, so bigger picture, just stepping back. This is the three day time frame that I'm looking at. Jordan, why do you use the three day? 
well, it's a little bit better than the it's a little bit better than the daily, and it's also better than the weekly. It's between the two, and it gives me a good vantage point over here. And I can see over here this trend line. Once it's broken, we've broken down, coming in for the retest right now. We're gonna see if we're hold and rejected, right? And if we are, then we could see in 2021 this big trend continue here of that weaker dollar. We could be targeting down over here in this pocket towards 80, 70. Or we're gonna trade back up right now, get above this resistance at 92, 22. Let's see where Brad has that over here. Brad has it in this area right over here where I'm focused between these next two red lines. Get above that, that's where, that that's the, that's the see that big, 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 big support? That should now be resistance into that area. Get above there and it looks like we have a game changer over here. Price will be back up into this channel over here and then we could be looking for a, a stronger dollar over here. That's just relative. That's just relative to other fiat currencies. I do not expect that Bitcoin is gonna be affected whatsoever by a strong or weak dollar at this point in its cycle. I've always said in 2021, that's when Bitcoin is gonna break all correlations. You saw that happening at the beginning of the year, the first 10 days over here, Bitcoin was up, you know, went from 20,000 to 40,000, up 100%, up 100% in less than uh, 30 days over here. And that's exactly what we're looking at right now at this point of the cycle on Bitcoin. Whether we have a strong dollar or a weak dollar, whether or not the Fed is easing or tightening, Bitcoin is still going to do what it's doing. Now, maybe we have uh, obviously much more price appreciation at times when there's an easy monetary policy and less of when it's not as accommodative. Sure, that makes a lot of sense, but that four year bull phase and then bear phase is still present. I know a lot of people are talking that Bitcoin's not gonna see its bear market this time. Great, that's what, that's, that's what makes a market. That's the same thing, that's the same crowd as people who didn't believe the halving wasn't priced in, right? The heavens, the heaven wasn't priced in. We told you, we told you ahead of time, but, but people wanted to fight that and argue that, right? I don't know. I, I think they just haven't taken the time to understand Bitcoin itself. That seems to be another recurring theme today. Right now, you have so many different videos on YouTube, podcasts to to learn from. Great time to be discovering. Great time to be learning more about Bitcoin, Ethereum. It's fun. It's fascinating. It's your future. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'll talk to you in the morning.